hi there. Here's a little question for you to think about. What will happen to your stuff and even your body after you pass away? We might not see the importance of this until it is too late. But when someone passes in our community, how are we all going to have a shared understanding about what the deceased wanted for themselves and their family? By having a will. That's how. A will is a legal document that you make while you're alive. After you pass away, your will tells everybody what you want to happen to all your stuff. Let's have a look and we'll see what I am talking about. Here's a story about two communities and two families. This isn't a true story, but it could be. Both of these families have recently lost a senior family member. Let's have a closer look at that first family. The deceased is Rosie, and this is husband Thomas. Thomas and Rosie are traditional owners and elders of their community. Rosie has left behind Thomas and a large family with members living in remote communities in town as well as in the city. Rosie worked as a school teacher for much of her life. As well as her wage, she received regular royalty payments from mining through the Native Titles Trust. She owned a house, a car, and had some money in the bank. Her husband Thomas used to work as a stockman. He's been retired now for a long time, but he's still as sharp as a knife. Rosie's left behind three children. Chubby and Selena are Rosie's biological children. Charlie was adopted by customary law when he was a small child. Now that Rosie has passed away, her family are keen to find out what to do with her house and car and the money in her bank account. To do this, they need to talk to a lawyer. Here they are now, heading into town to meet that lawyer. Now, let's take a look at that other family. The deceased in this family is Stephen. Stephen was a TO and long-standing counselor of his community. When he was younger, he worked as a ranger. He worked hard his whole life and had accumulated some wealth. He also received regular royalty payments from mining through the Native Titles Trust. Stephen has a house and a car in town where he lived with his wife, Kathy. Kathy has renal disease and needs to have dialysis four days a week. Stephen and Kathy have two children, Banjo and Priscilla. Stephen also had another child from his first marriage, Ben. Ben has become a professional footballer and lives in the city. Here, we see Banjo and Priscilla saying goodbye to their mum as they get ready to visit the lawyer. They are also keen to find out what is going to happen to their father's stuff and his body now that he has passed away. When Rosie's mob got to town, they went to the lawyer's office and sat down with the lawyer. The lawyer had some papers in front of her. She picked up those papers and said, your mother was quite sure of what she wanted and she put all those wishes down here in this will to make it easier for you all. This is where a will is so good. Now Rosie's family will know exactly what to do. The lawyer then proceeded to inform the family of the instructions that were written in Rosie's will. The whole estate will be divided and shared amongst the children and grandchildren. She has asked that her husband Thomas be the trustee of the will. It is the trustee's responsibility to pay all the bills, including funeral expenses. These are to be paid out of the money Rosie has in her bank account. Rosie knew that Thomas would be good at this job because he has always been good with paperwork and money business. After all these expenses have been paid, then all the money left over in her bank is to be divided between the children and grandchildren. 80% is divided equally between each of the kids. The remaining 20% is to be kept in trust and invested for all the grandchildren. That means that each of the grandchildren will get a little bit of money when they turn 18. The house and car go to the children in equal shares. Chubby asks the lawyer if this includes Charlie, who is an adopted child. The lawyer says, yes it does, because Rosie specified this in her will. Finally, the lawyer informs the family that it was their mother's wish to be buried in the community cemetery. <laughs> As they leave the lawyer's office, they joke and laugh about traveling overseas with the money they've inherited and taking the kids to New York. Look easier, it's Steven's mob. Let's see what happens in their meeting with that lawyer. When Steven's kids sat down with the lawyer, she gave them some bad news. She told them that Steven never had a will, 
And so, we do not know what he wanted to do with his estate or his body. The lawyer continued to explain that because the house was owned jointly with his wife Kathy, it will go to her. She'll also get the car and most of the money left in Stephen's bank account. Some money will go to the kids, but it will be divided in equal shares between Banjo and Priscilla and Stephen's other son, Ben. This made the kids feel really shocked and upset. Banjo told the lawyer that the children and grandchildren were expecting to get more than that because this is their cultural way. The lawyer says she's sorry, but there's nothing she can do. As Stephen left no will, the government law has to be followed. Priscilla said, This is terrible. Mom's far too sick to manage Dad's estate. She spends half her time on dialysis. As no one knows what Dad wanted, the family are going to argue and fight over access to the money and put pressure on Mom. On top of all these problems, Banjo and Priscilla realized that no one knows where Stephen wanted to be buried. In community or in town. Woohoo! There goes Rosie's mob. Look at them go. They couldn't go to New York because of COVID. So they bought that brand new red troopy instead, eh? So, that's my little tale about wills. What do you think? Has it made you want to have a will? It certainly made Banjo and Priscilla feel that way. After their father passed leaving no will, a rift opened up amongst their family. There was fighting about the money in the house, and no one had any control. They felt so bad about it that they decided to ensure the same thing wouldn't happen when their mother died. So, they went back to meet that lawyer to make a plan for getting a will for their mum and for themselves too. The wills are going to ensure that their family and community will have a shared understanding about what they want to happen after they're gone. For more information about how to organize a will for yourself, contact Arts Law. Mm -hmm.